Hi, thank you for joining us here today. Uh, hope you're excited about the Microsoft Ignite conference. I know I am. I'm going to learn a lot about new Microsoft tools and technologies and how people are using them in the market. I'm Hugh Bergen. I'm the data and AI leader for the Americas within our Microsoft Services Group, which is a Microsoft technology focused uh, consulting practice. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, some business challenges around data and how clients are using Microsoft technology to solve business problems and uh, address some key issues, especially around inventory optimization. I'm joined by uh, Luke Pritchard here today. Thanks, Hugh. Luke Pritchard here, Managing Director and Leader of our U.S. Data and AI uh, practice within our Microsoft Services Group. And um, I'm here to talk about data fabric and how that helps to scale AI, uh, such use cases for inventory optimization. Thank you, Luke. So let's, uh, let's dive into it. We've got uh, a pretty full agenda for a few minutes here. So we're going to talk about the current state of data today and insights today and, and some of the challenges across the data landscape. We're gonna introduce and talk about a concept called the data fabric and, and talk about why it matters now, now more than ever. Uh, we're gonna go into a use case around inventory optimization, which is really a great example of how the data fabric can help scale AI solutions like inventory optimization in a way that was very difficult to do before and then we'll talk a little bit about our Microsoft capability uh, within EY as well. So today uh, we wanted to start this conversation really just taking a step back and, and talking about how, you know, our clients have significant opportunities within their business to get value out of data and analytics, but companies often struggle unlocking the insights they need from that data. Many of our clients are data rich, but our insights poor. They struggle with uh, looking across all of the different data that's within the, within the enterprise, tapping into and cross-pollinating that data in a way that can help us answer new business questions uh, that, that, uh, that drive real value. And that, that value is something that's important for competition in the market, for market share. Uh, companies that are uh, leveraging their data effectively are higher performing companies. Uh, there's significant uh, business value that can be unlocked uh, globally. And uh, the cost of you know, poor data management is significant from an operating perspective. The, the data fabric is a modern approach to data that uh, our clients are using to, to look across their ecosystem and uh, access insights and access data uh, across the overall fabric of, of data within the organization. And Luke, do you wanna talk a little bit more about the data fabric and the challenges that exist today? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Hugh. Our clients have been working with data you know, for years in a variety of different ways. Uh, there's data warehouses, data lakes, uh, there's been a, a number of data science projects, AI projects. Um, but in today's landscape, one, one of the key things that we see is realizing the value of using the data, um, being able to have that market differentiator using their data, uh, and be able to scale it easily. Um, but there is a number of challenges that, that folks are, that we're seeing with our clients, uh, drowning data, collecting a lot of data, not having it well governed or trusted, uh, lots of innovation projects, uh, how to rationalize when to scale an in innovation, when to not, and then what's the most uh, efficient way of doing that. And then also a lot of uh, data duplication, data drift, uh, data moving downstream into applications that may or may not need to go uh, into there from both a security perspective, but then also a cost perspective. Um, but at, at the end of the day, there is, there's a, a lot of things going to data. Um, there's lots of technical solutions, but how do you handle it from a business outcome perspective? And that's what we're going to talk a little bit more about data fabric and how that can help. So to help with the, a lot of these key challenges here, uh, we've brought together uh, a, con a design concept called data fabric. It's a lot less about the technology as it is more on the uh, business domains and the business outcomes. So decoupling the technology from that, um, but really focusing how, how 
the business outcomes could be achieved using data, um, being able to adopt for the rapidly uh, changing technology and, and be agile enough and not have a monolithic uh, project from that side. There's a lot of concepts uh, that have come out in modern ar architectures such as data lake house, data mesh, and these all fit within a data fabric. Um, as the technology side is decoupled, um, as you bring the use cases and the business together. Uh, a couple of key concepts to it is it, what we think of in the data fabric is fit for purpose data access. And what we mean by that is data access is not so restricted or so constrained that the user experience is, is missed, but it, it is designed in a way with security in mind to be able to allow the user to do their job, have a great user experience and be able to realize results from the data side. The other key construct that we have around this is around the business domains, how organizationally uh, uh, organizations have their people, their teams, their partners, uh, their, their different technical groups, business groups to work together across the tech technical platforms that are in place uh, to maximize that use of data to help with the use cases. And then the use cases are really designed around optimizing the data flows uh, around how data flows, not copying data everywhere in, uh, downstream from that side, but being able to optimally move data, uh, keep data in place where it makes sense, uh, and use and optimizing the amount of compute. Compute in the cloud is the most expensive uh, piece, but not repeatedly uh, or uh, from a from a compute perspective, using that, but be more optimized, more precise, and what needs to happen to drive that user experience. And a couple of key constructs that we see around this is the data self-service is very important that, that I've mentioned on. However, the AI advanced analytics, especially with looking through the experiments, being able to find and prove the value and the scale, and then the real-time process enablement. What, what are the things that need to be in place to be able to push those in near real time, such as a call center, uh, uh, somebody calls in uh, looking to, um, get support, but maybe there's an opportunity to upsell them and, and sell them something highly relevant uh, in, in addition to the helping them with their support request. Uh, in addition to this, things to think about is the metadata, the governance uh, around the data. So the data is trusted as, as you work through your fabric. So folks know what the data is across the enterprise. They know they can trust it. They know they can use it to go drive out the business outcomes that they want. Uh, the other thing is obviously the security of data in those industries, but then also providing it in a way that users can use the tools they want, uh, the way they want, or the data is provided to a system in a way that drives a rich uh, positive experience and drives uh, process efficiency. Why does data fabric matter? What, why are we talking about uh, this design concept. Um, we think it really matters is that there's a lot there's a lot of different approaches to handling data. We've seen a lot of monolithic, uh, one size fits all architecture patterns uh, that have been used through the years. Um, lots of data projects that go on for multiple years. Um, you know, technical teams, you know, working really hard to deliver, uh, uh, you know, putting a lot of effort into a lot of expense. And then on the business side, uh, uh, not being satisfied, not getting the data they need in a, in a timely manner, not getting it in a way uh, that they can use it in a useful way or, or complaining about experience and performance. And so this has been a paradigm that we've seen uh, through the years. And as we've worked through data, data fabric, this is a way to align the business and the technical teams more seamlessly through success criteria, through use cases and business outcomes uh, that they both can mutually agree to in an organization while adopting uh, and being able to innovate and keep pace with the technology technology um, innovation that's going on with all, all the different vendors, uh, such as Microsoft here, who releases new products every week. Um, it, it's a hu hugely different differentiating uh, concept of bringing the integration together across, across this versus a data lake or a data warehouse. Uh, you know, we bring in the controls, the process, the policies, industry standard models into into a core data model around this, around your fabric, uh, 
and optimizing the data flows really helps out when you align it, when you decouple the technology from the data, um, from that side of things. You know, and the one thing I would take you to, want you to take away from this, uh, this presentation is a data fabric is really, how do you use and bring your data together to drive business outcomes as defined by business use cases and human centric design? How, how do you do that? And how, how we do that is through use cases. So I've been talking about use cases. What are those use cases? Uh, you know, we have a number of uh, different clients we've worked with uh, where we've uh, helped put together a data fabric to help them scale AI across multiple uh, industries. I think the most interesting, um, more, more recent time that everyone's familiar with is the COVID-19 return to work initiatives. Uh, these are a lot of, uh, you know, small to large projects, but they're ad hoc. They haven't been contemplated before, require different uh, unifications of data, but there's some clear outcomes uh, that need to happen in a timely fashion. And Data Fabric has been very instrumental in those concepts to make that happen. Um, another, uh, another area, consumer products and retail, um, and insurance pricing, uh, media, inter entertainment, they're all doing it agricultural, and, and there's many other industries as well. But to go into a little bit more depth, I'm gonna hand it off to Hugh to talk about inventory optimization. I do think that uh, inventory optimization is really a perfect use case for the data fabric and uh, scaling AI off of that data fabric. The, the problem statement for inventory optimization, and, and it's, it's a bigger problem than ever before. I mean, with COVID-19, with uh, global supply chain challenges, inventory optimization matters more now than it ever has before. And so the, the problem statement is, you know, how do we reduce and optimize inventory while not affecting sales, while not affecting customer experience, but, but maximizing our working capital uh, investments? And so it's a, tough, it's a tough combination. And we really think optimization that leverages a wide set of data elements is critical to making that successful. And so being able to tap into a data fabric that gives you access to customer data, gives you access to supply chain data, uh, external data variables, uh, you know, store and retail uh, data, uh, being able to access all of those individual pieces of data with a series of different technologies is really what's needed to get the most value out of that data and really answer, answer the questions that are uh, demanded from the problem statement. And so th there's a few different components to this uh, when you think about modern inventory optimization. And uh, I, I won't read through all of these, but I mean, it, it starts with the large data assets I mentioned earlier that it, it includes uh, external data and, and siloed data that needs to be broken down and integrated. Um, it really involves machine learning at scale and the machine learning operating model required to uh, create all of these individual forecasts that are out there. So when you think about forecasting uh, based upon all of this data, you're really talking about individual forecasts at the SKU and store combination so that you can maximize uh, the inventory levels uh, or, or optimize the inventory levels at that individual point of uh, point of entry. And then uh, it's also about simulation. And so this is an important feature, a feature of this solution, which allows you to not just predict uh, inventory levels uh, or forecast inventory needs, but also simulate if we were to change our inventory strategy, or if we were to adjust our parameters for inventory, uh, what would that effect be on the customer experience? What would the effect be on our service levels? So simulating that, doing scenario modeling on that is another layer that can sit on top of this data fabric to really, to really help businesses perform better. So Luke, why don't, you, uh, why don't you take a moment and talk about this use case in the context of the data fabric that, that we just walked through a moment ago. Yeah, thanks, Hugh. Uh, in terms of inventory optimization, how do we make this real? And, and especially, you know, thinking through, there still has to be technical components uh, to any use case, you know, regardless if a data fabric is used or not. 
Uh, Q did a good job running through um, what we were trying to do on the business side, but how does this fit into this, uh, into the data fabric and, and how was this realized? Um, looking through there, there was, a, uh, I think the first place I would go is the number of data sources that were act activated in the data fabric. Um, there's customer specific demand, there was customer history, demographics, SKU information, store information, and, and other uh, data sources. Uh, just to name a few. So there's there's a number of data sources that go into inventory optimization. Where the Fabric helped uh, especially was bringing the get data together and unifying that data uh, so that it could be used uh, for, for AI advanced analytics by the data scientists to go in, uh, use their notebooks, use the compute that's in the cloud through Databricks um, and be able to start modeling off that. Um, once they found the experiment, once they looked through that, then then it became about scaling through that. And this is where uh, metadata uh, really becomes important. So what does the data pipelines look like? How can we trust the data? What's the governance around the data? The data that's being, uh, uh, being uh, processed by the model uh, using Databricks at scale. How, how does that all get sequenced and work together? And then the security, not only for the uh, security of how uh, to the data itself and access to the data between the services, but then also to the, the end users and, and the systems that are extending out um, from that side. Um, the data access providing APIs out for systems so they can automate the work using Azure Functions here. Uh, there's some data self-service to look through, you know, uh, analyzing the reports, do some forecasting in the, in the planning side from the business analysts using Power BI uh, from that side. And I think the one the one thing that was very powerful using this um, uh, this particular piece is it, it's Microsoft. It's all pre-integrated using the services, and so uh, doing something like this in the fabric that's cloud-based um, um, uh, from a Microsoft perspective is pretty powerful, and, and how fast and and also how fast you can develop this. Uh, uh, the DevOps capability, doing iterations through the data pipelines and, and the applications themselves, and then also the model and, and being able to scale out the model in ways that years ago, this this would have been very, very challenging, expensive, um, and bringing this all together. Appreciate the, uh, the, the overview there. I think, I hope you've learned a little bit about data fabric, uh, learned a little bit about uh, how a key use case around inventory optimization really benefits from, from the data fabric, and also how the Microsoft native services can really help accelerate uh, time to value and, and enable the fabric to come to life. Uh, before we go, we wanted to share just a, a little bit of an overview of our Microsoft services group here at EY. Um, you know, we are the first of the big four to establish a dedicated Microsoft technology consulting practice. Uh, we're really all about having deep practitioners in the Microsoft space. Uh, we're working across the full stack from data and AI to cybersecurity to cloud applications and uh, biz, biz apps. Uh, and, and we believe we're being recognized in the market. We've received uh, U.S. Partner of the Year with Microsoft uh, overall, as well as Global Advisory Partner of the Year for 2021. We also have uh, advanced specializations we've been recognized for around analytics on Azure, low-code app development, and adoption and change management. So thank you very much for the time today. We appreciate it. We hope you've uh, uh, in enjoy your week ahead uh, with Microsoft Ignite and look forward to talking to you soon.